What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and today I wanted to make a follow-up video to my original video, which was the Crazy Conlang idea. Now, I actually had a lot of positive responses, so a massive thanks for that. And in fact, enough people showed interest that I went out of my way and created the subreddit, and people have already started posting their ideas to it. So here's the link, go over there, like, join the subreddit, you know, follow it, whatever, and start contributing ideas. Even if you don't think you're gonna be in this for the long term, anything that you can contribute at this stage will probably help in some way, as long as it follows like the original concept. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about this concept because obviously I didn't quite express it well enough. A lot of people said this sounds like a philosophical language from the 17th, 1800s. Um, yes and no. So let me point about, let, let me go into the differences here. So the philosophical languages from those period in time, they were all trying to hierarchically organize the entire universe into a language and everything was like built from top down all the way down as in some type of hierarchy. Some of them were like kind of scientific based and others were just kind of like random in their hierarchy, but they tried to create a complete hierarchy. The objective of this language is not to create a hierarchy. There will be hierarchies within the language, but that's not the objective. The objective of this language is to embed it, as much scientific mathematical information of relevance that a student might use in primary school, high school, and possibly university. Information that would be of some way important to everyone in life. So when we go through school, generally we all have the core subjects of maths and, you know, English, obviously not relevant in this case, but sciences and stuff like that. And we all have to route learn the same information. And that most of that information has not changed in the last hundred years. It's pretty damn stable at this stage in time. Some of it changes, but realistically not that much. So what we're trying to do here is to embed that information which we foresee is not going to change. Um, at least not anytime soon, into the core of the language. And then if someone natively speaks this language, they can just unpack their own language and grab that information out without having to route learn it, in a sense. So I just wanted to express that this is not to create an entire hierarchy of all life, of all existence, but instead to pack the language with information that would be useful for helping a student, one, uh, just know a subject and to see the connections between the different subjects. So that's basically the, the main core of the idea there. So if we take it and have a look at the animal hierarchy, some people are asking, are you going to include the entire list of different species from top to bottom? You're looking at like seven levels of um, taxometry. I, I can't remember the, the exact word right now. I don't see the point in that. Like, why would we need the first one? Like, that makes no sense. You're not going to pack that in there. Uh, the bottom ones are constantly changing, so I don't see the point including those in there. But some of those middle levels, the ones where you're talking at the level of mammal, reptile, stuff like that, and then maybe several levels under that, marsupial and stuff, those do seem relevant. So we could probably find a way of packing those into the language, and the rest of it we'll figure out as a community how to do, but we don't really need to follow that tree, because we're only trying to pack information that that student's going to need for life. Everyone needs to know what a reptile is. Everyone needs to know what a mammal is. So we can pack that into the language. Anything that's a mammal could contain a suffix saying it's a mammal. But is it this subspecies of a subspecies of a subspecies of a subspecies of a mammal? No, we don't need that. It's not really relevant and it's not going to help the student unless they really go into that field of study and then later on they're going to learn the Latin names anyway. Okay, so that was basically the idea. Now, we've already had some people throwing their thoughts out there regarding uh, numbers and um, some stuff regarding music, so I'm, I'm really pumped in seeing that. But what I want us to kind of do first is I've, I've opened up a um, post on our new subreddit, which is, uh, let me just quickly find the name of it again. It's called The First Step. Now, I know some people are excited and they want to get into the language, the nitty gritty of it straight away. Even I do. But my job, my role in this project is to promote it, to get people on board, to help us build this as a community. In order to do that, we need to have a very set purpose. Now, I've rambled a lot about the purposes, but I want this in writing so that we can say, hey, it's like the Esperanto community. Hey, here's the internal idea. Okay, now what I've got so far, and this is very long-winded, and I want people to go to the subreddit and 
cut it down, make it more on point and help me out here and maybe help me better word it because I'm not the best writer in the world. What I've got is this. The core aim of the encapsulated language project, I'm calling it encapsulated because we haven't even decided on a name yet. The, the core aim of the encapsulated language project is to create a language that encapsulates as much relevant scientific and mathematical knowledge as possible within the sounds and constructs of the language itself. A native speaker of this language will have instant access to a large pool of scientific and mathematical knowledge simply through learning how to unpack their own language and utilize the knowledge cached within it. That's quite long, quite wordy, so I want your assistance in helping me compress this down and get to the core of it. Like, I've got it in my head, and I've put it down on the computer, but I'm sure there are people who are better writers than me out there who can help me express this better, and in a way that will make people understand instantly, okay, I get what this is on about. So that there is the, the first step. Now, the second step, I think, is we probably need to select some better temporary name. Maybe encapsulated language works fine. But I think the next step after we've got that core idea is to go, okay, let's kind of figure out as a community what things we do want to encapsulate in this language. Obviously, um, someone has already, uh, let me just bring up their name. I shouldn't say someone, they've got a name. Okay, the person's Reddit's name is flame rate one. Flame rate one has already gone awesomely into phonology and into the number system. And I am really thrilled to see where that goes. Um, and that's what I want. I want people who are already passionate, already have spent years working on some type of concept to come into this project and go, hey, I've got this. I've been working on it for years. I think it will work well with your project. Let's try and find a way to slot it in there. So then we can go, okay, well, we've got uh, some type of number system we're going to be using, some type of um, animal hierarchy, some type of chemical hierarchy, or some type of color-based system, I don't know, but let's kind of work together now. One, figure out exactly what is the aim, and two, let's figure out what we need, who we need on board for this project to actually start moving forward. Anyway, that's the video. If you like this, you know what you need to do. Like it, share it, especially share it with anyone else who you think might be interested in creating a language in which we have the knowledge we need as humans moving forward. Okay, see you all in the next video.